Hello, let's do some Fed uh, monetary uh, expansion or retraction problems. Uh, so before we do anything here, um, let's just look at a fractional reserve uh, banking system model. Okay, so in this system here, uh, whoever the central bank is is requiring that firm or that banks, who are firms, uh, hold on to ten percent. So if uh, somebody comes and deposits a hundred dollars in cash into a bank. The bank has to hold on to 10%. They have to reserve it, uh, but then they're allowed to, to loan out the rest. Okay, and so banks like to do this because um, on the 10%, well, really on our whole deposit, they're going to pay us 0.5%. You've probably noticed that in your uh, savings account, right? And then they're going to loan out that money. Uh, and if it's a mortgage, you know, three and a half percent. If it's a uh, credit card, we're talking eight to nine percent, and if it's a higher risk type thing, it's twelve percent or more, right? Um, so you know the bank is a pretty good deal here. We they pay out uh, 0.5 percent to to use somebody else's money, and uh, they got to protect it, and you know the guys with guns are there and everything. But then they get to loan it all out. So on the mortgage, you know, making three percent, but for a really long time, and shorter term stuff, uh, they make how much higher percentage or yield. And they do there. Okay, so then uh, this 90% gets loaned out, right? Often it gets loaned out to businesses, sometimes even to the government. So that gets dropped into somebody else's bank, okay? Here, uh, and that uh, that new bank has to hold on to 9%, okay? But that means that 90% of that deposit, which is $81, gets loaned out uh, to another bank, okay? And that new bank is going to have to reserve $8.10. And they can loan out uh, 73 or so dollars, right? And it just keeps on going, it keeps on going. So we've got a trick um, to figure out what this multiplier is off this first uh, deposit here, assuming that the banks don't hold on to extra reserves, that they just hold on to what they have to, okay? And so that money multiplier is one over the reserve requirement. So in this case, it was one over uh, 10% or point one uh, and then I like to do this with fractions because you may run into a situation on a test where you can't use a calculator so it's one over one tenth multiply the bottom by ten multiply the top by ten and we end up getting money multiplier of ten okay so in this case if the Fed were to um, to create uh, I don't know ten million dollars Of new money um, so the the first bank is gonna have to hold on to 10% of that so that's one million dollars so it's really nine million multiplied by the money multiplier so that's that's what gets going through the system uh, and this is 90 million dollars in new money okay okay and so let's do a problem that we might see here so that was why it, why it works that way so uh, here we have, say the Fed conducts open market operations, so this is uh, code basically for buying and selling of bonds. You're going to see this for a long time, uh, open market operations is what the Fed does when it uh, conducts monetary policy. So you buy $10 billion worth of uh, government securities, and this translated into uh, layman's terms means bonds. So you're going to see the word securities quite a bit, a security for um, a company is often, now companies do have bonds, but, but most of the time they, they fund things through stock. Um, and those are called equities or just securities in general. But government securities always refers to bonds. So here we have uh, the Fed open market operations buying. And so what are they doing? They're buying bonds. Uh, and so this is actually increasing the money supply. So we should expect an increase in the money supply. The question is how much? So the reserve requirement is 5%. So we're going to think about our little system here. Okay, so instead of being 10%, it's be 5%. Uh, we don't need to draw anything out because we just know that the, uh, the money multiplier is 1 over the reserve requirement. Okay, so it's 1 over 0 0.05. So you can do that on a calculator or you can go 1 over 5 over 100, okay, and that's 1 over 1 20th, and multiply all that out, turns into 20, okay.
So I'm going to multiply that by 10 billion, but not 10 billion because they have to keep that first 5% before loaning it out. And so um, it's 10 billion times 0 0.05 is it's 0 0.5 uh, billion or 500 million. This is the amount that gets reserved. Okay, so that that doesn't get multiplied. So it's 9.5 billion times 20. And let me make sure I get the right answer here. 9.5 times 20 is 190 billion dollars. So 190 billion in new money just got created based on this open market operations. Okay, now let's do uh, one more. Do this one real quick. Uh, so now they're conducting open market operations, means buying or selling bonds. They're buying 50 billion, so the money supply is going up. The question is, how much? And the reserve requirement is 20% now. So the money multiplier equals 1 over reserve requirement. So it's 1 over uh, 20 over 100. Those go away, so 2 over 10. So 1 uh, over 1 fifth. And now we've got the money multiplier of 5. Now before we do anything, notice this money multiplier is much lower than this one because the banks have to hold on to a lot more when the reserve requirement is higher. Okay, So lower reserve requirement means higher money multiplier. So 5 uh, times 50 billion, but it's not going to be 50 billion. It's going to be 20% less of 50 billion. So it's going to be 40 billion times 5. 200 billion dollars. So in both cases we get we get about the same monetary increase uh, but it's different because uh, this one's money multiplier was, was much higher than this guy. Okay. Now let's look at the real world here really quick. Um, this is the uh, Fed money multiplier graph. So back in the 80s it was three. Okay. Uh, and it's decreased, uh, and because and you see a big drop during the Great Recession, um, that's due to a couple of things. Okay, so one, uh, banks didn't want to loan out as much money. Um, either the people were bad, you know, borrowers they didn't trust uh, with bad credit or something like that, or they were just being more cautious because remember banks took a lot, took a lot of risk during this period of time, loaned out a lot of money. Um, or there were restrictions, um, you know, fiscal uh, regulations that were put in place uh, to prevent banks from being too loose. Okay, and you can see they're they're starting starting to increase again. What's kind of interesting about this is it's now less than one. So if the Fed were to do this, whoops, I'm in the wrong one here. If the Fed were to do either of these things, um, because it was money multiplier was like 0.9. Uh, basically, ten billion dollars in, in purchases is going to get less than ten billion dollars um, increase in the money supply. So that's kind of interesting. Last thing I'll say here is, what does this over, what does it do to the overall money supply and interest rates? So that was them changing the money supply, but when they change the interest rates, they're really doing the same thing or vice versa. So this is nominal interest rate, uh, and then this is the uh, funds that people want to borrow or to loan out. So there's a demand curve for these funds and you're on that demand curve. It's people want to borrow for their mortgage, their student loan, their uh, credit cards, you know, any home equity loans, anything, anything you want to do. Um, now the money supply is basically pretty, uh, pretty vertical. Um, the Fed changes it, but you know, not too often. But when they do, if they increase the money supply, so let's say that there's, I don't know, $10 trillion or so. You can look it up uh, in FRED to see what the real number is. Uh, but if they, if they buy bonds and increase the money supply, it's going to shift the money supply this way. Okay, This was our old equilibrium. This is our new equilibrium. So this is our monetary uh, policy in like 2010. Okay? In 2010, they were buying bonds like crazy, uh, and they pushed down nominal interest rates. So interest rates went down because uh, the Fed wanted people to spend and, and cut off the effects of the inflation. Okay, Now um, it's 2018 as I make this and the Fed is trying to increase interest rates. So they're actually selling bonds 
to the public. Okay, so when the Fed sells bonds, uh, it decreases the money supply and increases interest rates. Okay, it increases the nominal interest rate, but also the real interest rate. And when it buys bonds, it increases the money supply, but just like it did over here, it decreases the interest rates. Okay, and that's both good or bad depending on who you are. Uh, and Fed actions can definitely have an effect on your future career.